Hester, let's talk position previews as we continue our position preview series. This is it. This is the last one. We'll be done with it, and we'll move on to fall camp next week. Let's start with the defensive backs, particularly the cornerbacks. The strength of this team, um, which is par for the course with LSU football. Yeah. Um, but this year in, in Eli Ricks and Derek Stingley, you have maybe, uh, not maybe, I think it's undisputably the best cornerback duo in the country based on what they've proven on the field, not just right. not just the height. But one of the better cornerback duos that you've had at any school anywhere recently. I mean, you've got Stingley, Thorpe, finalist, potential candidate, Thorpe winner, potential yeah. candidate, Ricks in that same category. I mean, the rich get richer. LSU's loaded a corner. They are, and it's going to be interesting because they were embarrassed and disappointed by the passing statistics last year because it's it just doesn't play out because individually they played so well. Yep. But as a unit, because of scheme and other things, communication, the numbers just don't look like the players that you have. So even though they did individually prove to have really good seasons, they want to prove even more so that they can be a big part of why LSU improves on their pass defense. So you've got great players with great talent, with great accolades already that are hungry, and that's a great combination to have because that's two shutdown first-round type corners. Hungry was the word I was thinking of with Derek Stingley Jr. Because if you go back and look at his stats last year, they're good. They're they're, they're very good in terms yeah. of completions against, completion percentage, PBUs. But he didn't get the picks. He didn't have a pick last year. He dropped a couple. Um and he, he, he didn't have the, the year that he had his freshman year, okay? There were a ton of extenuating circumstances from the, the, the medical issue he had before the first game to playing injured against Missouri yeah. to a, num- a number of things, dropped interceptions, COVID, all kinds of weird stuff. But the, the talent doesn't lie. The tape doesn't lie. We know it's there. But he's got to be so hungry to prove every doubter wrong. And there's probably not that many doubters left, but they're out there. He's got to be absolutely starving to show up and say, hey, look, here I am. And they, they may not throw his way enough for him to get picks. Yeah. That's part of why he didn't have a bunch last year. But, hey, when Ricks is on the other side, you got to pick one. You do. And catching up with Derek at SEC Media Days, I saw a different side of him, and I mean that in a good way, because there was some challenging questions. When he sat down with us, I mean, we had a, a three-man team, and I was doing it for Sirius XM, and it was some guys that he didn't know, right? So he wasn't familiar with him. It wasn't like he was sitting down with T-Bob and I. Sure. So, you know, they challenged him a little bit. And he looked him in the eye. He didn't run away from the question, didn't get angry at the question. He explained his answer, and then he explained why it's going to be different in this season. So I was highly impressed with the way he handled himself. You're talking about, in my opinion, one of the best college cornerbacks that we've ever seen, not just in the last five years, ten years. I'm I'm talking about all-time type of corner talent, and this is someone that wants to go out there and prove even more so. So I'm excited about him. I know we don't talk about him a lot because we just expect him to be in – that position, but he's a player that I think is going to raise his level of play even more so, and that might be hard to believe for a lot of people that he can raise it. Yep, and then when you look at the depth there, you have Dwight McLaughlin, who played very, very well at the end of last season, including the Florida game, thrown into the the fire, came out um, much stronger. And then in the spring game, I thought was the best player on the field in spring game. Spring game showed the most juice of anybody on the field. Yeah. I mean, he's got some dog in him that I didn't know he had, and this is someone that LSU absolutely will be counting on in this next football season. I mean, he is going to be a key piece to this defense. And I don't know if it's in the slot with, with Cordell Flott mixing in there. I don't know if it's going to be on the outside, you know, switching some things up, whatever you might do. Maybe you put another guy in the slot. Whatever it is, the White will have a role with this football team because he has been highly impressive ever since that Florida game. You mentioned it. Go back and watch the spring tape. Watch before the whistle, during the play, and after the whistle. He proved a lot to me. He was awesome. He was fantastic in the spring game. He was the – I just talked about the obvious things that you see in camp. He was the obvious standout of the yeah. of the spring game to me on defense. Obviously, what John Trey Kirkland did on offense stood out as well. The nickel is a slightly different skill set, and I think Flott is a guy who was great as a freshman. The numbers speak for themselves. He was very, very outstanding when he was asked to play that role as, as a freshman. And then last year, struggled. Um, was, was one of the guys that other teams went at um, in certain situations. But I think, again, when you look at what the secondary did last year, they just weren't put in positions to succeed. And I think Flott is a guy in the nickel, has some playmaking to him. A guy that Derek Stingley's um, dad, Derek Stingley Sr., two years ago was, was, I remember him doing interviews on the radio and then telling me in conversations, like, look out for Flott. He does some things different. So the flip side is that I think McLaughlin's an outside guy. Like, he he may be able to play inside, and, and, and you can speak to this better than I can. You know, if you want to put Rick Stingley and McLaughlin out there as your three, and then 
know, move Stingley inside or move Ricks inside or whatever. Like you might be able to do that, but I think going into the season, Flott gives you something in that position that that maybe is specific to his skill set. So I agree with everything that you just said, and I think that Cordell Flott will have a bounce back year. If Dwight is in that mix, you know, that's okay as well. I do think that his skills on the outside are better than what his skills would be inside. And also, you have to remember, Jay Ward moved to safety. So it opens up a position as far as guys on the outside that you have to have ready to go. Like Dwight's going to play sometimes this year. So you have to continue to save your depth there. And he's going to be the third corner. In 2021 college football, you have to have a third corner, not like a nickel guy, but a third corner ready to go as well. So I think that's why he's going to stay at that position because you move Jay to safety. So Dwight kind of slides in as that third corner. Yeah, when LSU goes Mustang and, and they're they're putting six DB, they could put six six DBs out there. He he could be one of the guys that goes in there. And I think look, I, I try to split it up into corner, nickel, and safety. I think when you start talking nickel and safety, you have to include them together. Um, because that nickel is sort of a, a hybrid safety. You mentioned Jay Ward. I think he could be an X factor at nickel. You could play him there if you want to. Yeah. He's been moved to free safety. He may stay at free safety. But it, I think ideally they would love to just keep him at free safety, stay there. He looked great in the spring game there. We saw his uh, ball playing abilities last year at the end of the year, the incredible interception against Florida. He was a guy that played hurt early in the year, but when he was healthy last year, was really explosive. I uh, had the pick six against, was it Arkansas? It was a home game that he had the pick. Maybe it was Ole Miss that he had the pick six. Yeah. Um, but really played well down the end, of the end of the season, moved to safety. And I remember Durante Jones telling me that they in the spring, they just moved him there to kind of fill the spot. And right. they were like, oh, he's really good. We can't move him. So I think I think he stays there, but he yeah. could play some nickel if you need to, and you develop depth at safety. But then, again, like let's talk about safety in this grouping too. You have Sage Ryan coming in. You have Derek Davis coming in. You have Major Burns coming in, who Coach O said last week has the best chance to start for us at safety. You have Todd Harris coming back. Like that was a – safety was a, a problem position coming into the season from a depth chart perspective. Yeah. And now – it could be a strength because of the guys that you've added, whether they're freshmen or transfers, and moving Jay Ward there. Yeah, top 100 re- recruits coming in, uh, you know, with Ryan and and with Davis there. So that is something that that's good to have. You can coach them up right now. I don't know if they're going to be ready to go right at the beginning of the season, but uh, you know, Derek Davis was here for spring, so he's probably got a little bit of a a leg up as far as the freshmen, just because he's been here. But expect a lot from both of those players. You mentioned Major Burns coming over from Georgia. Didn't get a ton of experience, but he got enough SEC experience where he is a guy that you probably can plug in right now and feel pretty good about. But Todd Harris, he's played 37 games in his career at LSU. In 2017, he played 13. Yep. 2017 was a long time ago. It was. Right? But he's been that kind of guy, and if it wasn't for injury, we'd probably be talking about him more. He's, look, he only played three games in 19, but he was a starter on the national championship yeah. team before that. And remember the 2018 Alabama game? He was one of the best players on the field that game. Yeah. Like, when he's healthy and playing well, he's super effective. So, I was concerned about safety coming into the season in the spring. I said that's one of my positions of concern. I'm not really concerned about it anymore. I think you've got enough guys there that can make plays and, and impact winning. Yeah, getting a guy like Major Burns to transfer in, that was big because now he's that bridge. He's the bridge between Todd Harris, who's really experienced. He's got a little bit of experience, and then you have the freshmen who don't have experience. And so you've kind of got it on all levels. What that allows the young guys to kind of catch up to the veteran guys, you've got guys you can put in place until that happens. Now, this position, it, it might evolve over time. Game six, it might look completely different than it does game one or game two. I think Jay Ward's probably the only constant at that position. I think the other guys kind of move in and out a little bit depending on who's playing the best. Victory 